and away we go. Hello again, welcome. Uh, my name is Jody Scholes, and I am your instructor for the MBLEX review course. I just, it makes me like have permagrin, like big smile when I think about you passing the MBLEX. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here with you today. We're going to be talking about the benefits and physiological effects of massage. This class is delivered in three parts, three parts. First part is some test taking strategies. Uh, the reason I spend a few minutes at the beginning of class talking about test taking strategies is because knowledge is not enough. There have been super smart, knowledgeable people who have taken this test, the massage and bodywork licensing exam and failed. A lot of smart people because they maybe weren't the strongest test takers. We've had great body workers, excellent at the massage table, fail the emblex. That's simply because they didn't have test taking strategies. And so that's why I start each of our classes with some strategies that you can take and what works for you and you can apply them on, on game day, on test taking day. And you can apply them to your study habits as well. So test taking strategies is our first part of the class. Second part of the class is learn, learn, learn. And like I mentioned today, we're talking about the benefits and physiological effects of massage. Uh, we're only gonna get through two, maybe three systems of the body today, um, but that's okay. Uh, if you decide to uh, increase your pledge uh, to $20 a month, you get access to all of the full length classes. They're, uh, they're a full 60 minutes specifically on this, uh, on these subjects, on all the subjects from the MBLEX. If you have questions about that, just hit me up in the chat or hit me up uh, on the direct message through our patron community. Uh, so second part of class, benefits and physiological effects of massage, about 13 questions on your MBLEX. And then we will dissect some questions. And I'll tell you, today's questions are tricky. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So um, that's okay, just be paying attention. I'll guide you through, I'll guide you through the questions. And if you don't get them right the first time, that's okay. Let's learn about how to dissect a question. How, let's learn, what we're here to do is learn how to get to the best answer. All right, hot diggity dog. Here we go. Oh, well, the very first thing I'm gonna do uh, before I share my screen is I'm gonna talk about a test taking strategy. And I yeah, actually, I have the first few slides here that actually apply. So So welcome back. And welcome to those of you who are joining me for the first time. Glad to have you. All right. So I'm gonna talk to you about, well, we'll we'll name we'll name this character Darius. And um, because we have a student uh, in class uh, right now who is Darius. And Darius has been doing, has been fully embracing this test taking strategy. And this test taking strategy is build your test taking stamina. Now, we typically don't have two hours of test taking stamina. The average person doesn't. And when you were in school, I doubt that, uh, that your instructor had access uh, to a two hour simulation exam. Some schools do, but this is really a different beast. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot muscle through this test. I've had um, occupational therapists, physical therapists, go in to take the test and fail. 
I've spoken with them. They're shocked. They're hurt. They're, they're wounded. They're embarrassed. Their ego is bruised because they know all they need to know, right? But they didn't have test taking stamina. That means the ability to focus for two hours. If you were to sit down right now and read a book, could you keep your focus on that book for two hours? Now, I know you have the ability to focus for two hours. How many of you find it real easy to watch TV for two hours? I do. Yeah, truth. No problem for me to sit on the couch for two hours. Yeah, that's because we're turning off our brain, right? We're turning off our brain. We're watching something mindless. Someone else is in control. But what I'm going to ask of you is you start to pay attention to your ability to focus. And that is another way to say your stamina, your mental stamina, and we call it test-taking stamina. Now, on the practice exams that you take with me or that you take with anybody else, take a look at how much time you take for your practice exam. Set your own timer if you want. Uh, you can time yourself. Uh, you can also, well, I think I have a ticker on my, but in any case, just pay attention because, and if you want to ask me, you know, if you're taking my practice exams, I have a ticker. And for many of you, uh, when you are first taking practice exams and maybe not being successful, I reflect back to you and say, hey, you spent 50 minutes taking the test. I mean, that is a rare occasion. It is a rare occasion where someone can be successful taking the emblex and finishing in 50 minutes. Now, can it be done? Absolutely, it sure can. But that's not what I ask of you to aspire to. Because there is some nervous energy there, right? If you're only spending 10, 20 seconds on a question, you're kind of bouncing through these questions, right? Boom, boom, boom. And my concern with going quickly is that it's easy to misunderstand a question. So while I applaud those people who get through it quickly, I also know there's a real risk for missing the best answer. And so building our test taking stamina to an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes, that's the sweet spot right there. You're finishing that test in about an hour, 20 minutes. I know you're taking your time. I know that you've maybe paused even during your test taking experience to breathe, to recenter, to come back to the present. And I mentioned you know, this image and, and I talk about Darius. Darius has had over uh, 12 hours right now as of, as of my last look. He's been taking practice exams. He's taken... Oh goodness, at least uh, at least 10 practice exams. And each one has been over an hour. The first, actually I have to say the first weren't, right? The first few weren't kind of breezed through them. In fact, uh, if I'm being honest, not all of them were passing grades, okay? Usually I would use the name or tell the results or tell the story. But in this case, I'm gonna share with you. Not all of those tests were passing. But as um, Darius slowed down, he was consistently getting a score of 70 or plus. And 70 is on my exam, what it takes to pass. You know what he decided to do rather than rest on his laurels? He decided to shoot for 80%. Yeah, so continuous improvement, continually what, what Stephen Covey refers to in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He refers to sharpening the saw. You know, and that is actually what we're doing here, you guys. We're sharpening the saw. If you have a dull saw, can you still cut down a tree? Yeah, you can. Well, it's just going to take a little longer, a little bit more effort, right? But when you pause to sharpen the saw, and that's what you're doing in this class, 
you're sharpening your saw. You're improving the quality of your instrument. Then on test day, on game day, when you go to chop down that tree, it's a little easier. You still gotta put the work in, but it's a little easier and it goes a little faster. All right, that is uh, my test taking strategy for you today to build your test taking stamina and to consider, you know, consider that this course is sharpening the saw. You are taking an hour out of your week, maybe five hours. Out of your, today, you're taking an hour out of your day, maybe five hours out of your week to prepare for this test to sharpen the saw. Building your test taking stamina is a critical part of your success with the Emblex. Now, in this particular slide series, Darius shares um, his goals with his, uh, well, Darius arrives at the test training King Center and of course shares that he's here to take the test. This is the, the proctor for the exam or the, the woman who's going to greet you at the uh, Pearson View, not actually the woman, but a representation of the woman uh, or man who will greet you at the Pearson View Testing Center. And I want you to just pause here and take a look. Yes. Pass. Yes. That is what we're here for. That's the finish line. Oddly enough, it's the finish line, but it's also the starting line, right? Yeah. But looking forward, seeing that vision in your head of the pass. Oh, good. I was going to mention, I didn't want to unless I had a slide on it, but also when you pass, plan your reward. Plan your reward ahead of time. You're going to go out for a nice dinner with a beautiful view. I mean, are you going to, you know, are you going to go away for the weekend? Uh, are you going to take the day off? You're going to take the next day off. Um, are you going to buy some champagne or Prosecco? Plan your reward. Pass. Feel the feeling, know who you're going to call, definitely share it with me and plan your reward. Yeah, because you've earned it. You're here. You're doing it. You're doing the work. All right. Speaking of the work, let's get to it. Today, we are talking about the benefits and physiological effects of massage. Ooh, ooh. I like this topic. This is one. It's it's. It's simple, but it's not always easy. Let's take a look at a couple of the different systems. Here are all the systems of the body. And again, as I mentioned, um, each of these systems of the body is covered in the full length class. Today, we have an hour together. Uh, and I like to dig down just a little bit on each of these systems. But if you want to, uh, and so we don't get through them all, basically. Uh, but here are the different systems of the body, and uh, it would be good for you to be familiar with how massage benefits every system of the body. Cardiovascular, blood. Respiratory, we're going to talk about today. Lymphatic and immune, digestive, integumentary, skeletal. We're going to talk about nervous and endocrine today. Urinary, uh, muscle and connective tissue and reproductive. I'm gonna spend the majority of our time talking about the nervous system, the endocrine system, and the respiratory system today, and the benefits of massage for them. All right, let's jump in. So the nervous systems uh, is the entire electrical system that goes through our body. Uh, the nervous system has a central and a peripheral part to them. So the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system work together uh, and sending electrical stimulus along our nerve pathway using neurotransmitters, technically chemical messengers. I want to talk about the two parts of the nervous system. 
we've got the central nervous system. So central, grand central station is where all the carts kind of come back to, all the trains come back to in New York City. It's where a lot of them leave from, it's where they come back to, grand central station, the central nervous system, and the peripheral nervous system. So take a look at both parts, okay? The central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord. It is our, it, it's basically the computer that runs the body, right? The brain and the, and, the, and the spinal cord. So the brain and then the spinal cord that goes down all the vertebrae through our back. That is where the messages start, originate from, go out from there, and come back to. So messages of origin, brain, and, and um, spinal cord, but it works both ways. So let's, let's take a look. The peripheral nervous system is outside the brain and spinal cord. And the peripheral nervous system is like when you touch something hot, right? If you put your fingers on a hot oven, hot stove, hot burner, um, all of a sudden there's a electrical impulse that is sent very quickly through the nervous system back to the spinal cord and brain, says, ah, hot, could cause damage. So the peripheral nervous system communicates back to the central nervous system. And you can see here the different parts. So central, nervous system, brain, spinal cord, peripheral. We've got the somatic nervous system. We've got the autonomic nervous system. So within the autonomic nervous system, we have two friends. We've got the peripheral, we've got the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. And this may be dusting off some, uh, some remembering for you. It's like, oh yeah, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Okay, this is very important because it's often on the emblex. And so I'd like you to be clear about what the roles are for each of, for both of those systems of the body and the benefits of massage to those systems of the body, okay? All right, let's take a look. So we've got all of our body organs listed here on the far side. So sympathetic nervous system response is also called the fight or flight. So let's get these super clear, okay? Fight or flight is the sympathetic nervous system. And here is the body's response when the sympathetic nervous system kicks in. So fight or flight, a perceived threat, a perceived attack kicks in that fight or flight. So just like it sounds, fight, ah, am I gonna have to fight this saber tooth tiger? Ah, or am I gonna have to run? Now, have you heard the joke about the two guys who see a bear? So two guys see a bear and the one guy stops and like they're, they're backing up, backing up, backing up, but he stops and he's tying his sneakers. And his friend keeps backing up. He says, what are you doing? Why are you tying your sneakers? And the guy says, uh, I don't got to outrun the bear. I just got to outrun you. <laughs> yeah, all right. So fight or flight, okay? I got to fight or I'm going to run. So this is the sympathetic nervous system kicking in. Our pupils dilate because we're watching for other predators. Um, we are, our mouth might get dry because we're stop, not stop, but we really reduce the amount of saliva that's being produced. We're not about to sit down and have a four course meal. Ew. There's no digestion happening right now. Life threatening situation, right? So the spit, saliva, that production is reduced. The mucus production is reduced. Our heart rate, what do you think happens? Do, 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 right? Let's see, I think we might have some. Yes, exactly. So Enzi says, sympathetic is fight or flight, parasympathetic is relax, yes. Uh, and I'll get to your question, Lauren, when we um, get to Q&A. All right, so heart rate. 
fight or flight, ah, boom, 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 right? Heart rate increases. Um, we're pumping more blood. So bronchial muscles relax a little because we're about to have to start breathing deeply. So most things tighten, but we're about to start, you know, needing to get bigger breaths. So we have a little bit more oxygen capacity. Our, our rate of respiration is going to increase, okay? So the rate, that's how many breaths I'm taking per minute is the breathing rate. Um, peristalsis is reduced. What is peristalsis? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's peristalsis? Are you there? Okay, I'm gonna wait, but peristalsis is reduced. Um, you can see it's effect, it's from something with, to do with the stomach. So peristalsis is um, the action, the, the contraction of our colon to move things through the stomach, move things through the digestive tract. It is the muscle contraction of digestion. Yes, it refers to the breaking down of food. Digestion is the breaking down of food. Peristalsis is, is technically the muscle contraction that actually allows us to, um, so the digestive food moves through the stomach. So digestion slows down because we got, we got, we got to send the blood other places, right? We got to send the blood to those places that are essential. So digestion, not essential right now. Um, liver, um, the, it's going to increase the conversion of glycogen to glucose because we're going to need energy. So glycogen that's stored in the liver is now going to turn into glucose to help us run. We're going to decrease the amount of urine, even though sometimes when you're nervous, you have to pee. The actual production of urine slows down. So the secretion out, not the sense that we have to pee, um, but the actual production uh, of the kidneys is decreased urine secretion. Um, so we're gonna um, we're gonna increase. We're gonna secrete uh, nora norepinephrine and epinephrine, two hormones. Adrenaline is another hormone that's probably gonna get secreted during fight or flight, and the sphincter closes, so we tighten our butt. Um, and don't worry about what happens with the bladder. We might have to pee. We might have to release that because we don't want any waste in our, in our system. So in case we do get attacked, we won't get toxic, but don't worry about what happens to the bladder. Let's move over to the parasympathetic nervous system because we, we know what happens in fight or flight. We, we can kind of visualize that, right? Oh, and I do like to mention um, here at the bottom, I would feel sorry for the person who's always in flight, sympathy. I would feel sorry for the person who's all, always in sympathetic nervous system. So sympathetic nervous system can also be abbreviated as SNS. I don't often hear about that on the MBLEX, SNS or PSNS for parasympathetic nervous system. But if you see it, look at the context. If you don't understand an acronym, pause, look at the context of the question, okay? But uh, one way I remember the sympathetic nervous system response um, is I would feel sympathy for someone who's in fight or flight. All right, let's look at moving along with the parasympathetic. All right, so, so the pupils dilate, so they're, have you ever had your eyes dilated for like when you go to, um, when you go to have your eyes tested, the pupil gets really big, right? When it's dilated, that's like, okay. And you actually have to protect your eyes, right? You have to wear sunglasses sometimes. Um, so when we, uh, so Kia is saying, I would get them confused and remember them by thinking that you eat a pear and parasympathetic is rest and digest. Oh, I like that. Kia, you just shared in there that says um, she makes the parasympathetic uh, nervous system uh, connection through pear, 
eat a pear. Eat a pear, rest and digest. I like it. That's a new one. All right. So the iris will constrict. It'll get tinier because we're, we're probably have our eyes closed, right? So it just, it constricts. Saliva production is increased because we're in a parasympathetic nervous system response, which is also known as the rest and digest. So we're going to increase the amount of saliva, the amount of spit. Mucus production increases because we can do some of these non-essential things, um, like increase the production of, of mucus to help line our throat, line our nose, catch a little bit more of that with that cilia that's going through. Our heart rate if we're resting, what happens to our heart rate? The number of beats, the rate indicates the number of beats. So it's going to slow down. The, the number of beats and so the heart rate decreases. Breathing, the respiration rate also slows down. Compared to fight or flight, <laughs> That's a fast respiration rate. We're going to slow down. Right. I do that right now. Go ahead and take a deep breath and hold it to the count of three. Take a deep breath in. Hold it. And exhale. Take another deep breath in and expand your lungs. Deep breath in, in through the mouth. <gasps> Hold it. Come out through the nose. During a, that breathing that we just did sends a message to our parasympathetic nervous system to start kicking in. We can help that parasympathetic nervous system kick in by paying attention to our breath. So gastric juices are secreted. We're chilling out. We're digesting. Digestion increases. Uh, so the motility of our large intestine increases, which means we're moving more food. So we're pooping more. The motility, we're going to be able to move um, uh, more digested food through our large intestine. That's what's called motility of the large intestine. Uh, and, you know, we're going to increase the, the production of urine because we're going to increase the amount of metabolic waste that we can get cleaned up. While we're, while we're safe, we can clean up our system. We can produce more mucus. We can clean out our bladder. We can clean out our, our large intestine. It's safe. We're resting and digesting. Now, how does massage impact the nervous system? So massage induces the parasympathetic nervous system responses. It brings your clients into a parasympathetic state. It activates it shuts off the fight or flight. It activates the parasympathetic nervous system response. And so by doing so, through massage therapy, through facilitating that space, you are facilitating a space where the body can heal. You are facilitating a space that brings out the parasympathetic body response. That is the benefits of massage. All of these are part of the benefits of massage to the nervous system. Now, we do need to be careful uh, in what system of the body that the question is being asked about. We're focused right now on the nervous system. We're about to go into endocrine. But take a look, you know, heart rate is decreased. That is a parasympathetic nervous system response that makes it reflective, reflexive, right? Reflexive. 
but that could also be considered a benefit to the cardiovascular system. Could be, right? So just be careful with which system of the body the question is asked. There are many benefits of massage that overlap with another system. And so just be careful that you're getting to the best answer for that question and that you're answering the question that is being asked of you. Can you give us, um, sorry to interrupt, can you give us two examples on those questions? I absolutely can. Um, so, so I believe, Vanessa, your question is, can you give us two examples of questions that might overlap? So, uh, for example, the lungs are a part of our respiratory system. And so the fact that our breathing rate slows down, that's a benefit of the respiratory system. That benefits our breathing. Our oxygen saturation levels increase because we're breathing slowly and deeply. That's a benefit of massage to the respiratory system. But it's also a benefit of massage to the nervous system. Eliciting, bringing out that parasympathetic nervous system response benefits every system of the body. So the parasympathetic response is a nervous system response and it's a reflexive response. Do you remember what the opposite of reflexive is? We've got a reflexive response, means that the body, it happens inside the body automatically, but then we've got another benefit of massage over here. Let me see, I've got some answers in the chat. Let's take a look. Yeah, yay, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Char says mechanical, Paige says mechanical, yes. So those are the two different types that we have to look at. The mechanical effects of massage, breaking up scar tissue, lifting, stretching, that's uh, ischemia, creating pink in the, in the skin. We can see we have mechanical effects, but then we have reflexive effects, which is 100% of the time, the parasympathetic nervous system. And so we need to be, and I'll, I'll give you a warning. One of our dissecting the questions today, we overlap. I give you benefits of massage, but you're gonna need to answer with the best answer what are benefits of massage for that system of the body? All of them are benefits of massage, but only one answer applies to that system of the body that I've asked in the question. So stay tuned. Did that answer your question, Vanessa? Give me a thumbs up in the chat or just chime in. Yes, thank you. Cool, excellent. So fair warning, as you know, the emblex is tricky, right? You know this. I would love to tell you it's not, but it is. Uh, there are distractions in every question. And so part of our work is to navigate around the distractions. Yeah, kind of sucks. All right, endocrine system, Boop, ba -doo. the endocrine system, oh, it's such a great system in the body. It produces all of our hormones. Um, and so it regulates our temperature. It um, secretes insulin to let us process sweets. Here are the different uh, organs that are associated with the endocrine system. So we've got the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the pineal. Those are all in the brain. Uh, we've got uh, the thyroid gland. We hear about that quite a bit, right? The thyroid right here. We've got the thiamus. Don't be confused, the thiamus. Uh, we've got the pancreas, which is technically part of the endocrine system because it, it um, produces insulin. The adrenal glands, we just talked about them in uh, the parasympathetic nervous response because they produce cortisol, they produce 
norepinephrine, epinephrine, they produce adrenaline. That's why they're our adrenal glands, right? We've got the testes, uh, so the, uh, the testes for the male and uh, part of our endocrine system for females is our ovaries right here. Again, because they produce hormones. So hormones are uh, synthesized. Uh, they're uh, synthesized just means they're absorbed. They, they, so if, um, if a DJ is playing music and um, is synthesizing the music, he's bringing it together, right? So hormones are sympathized away at their target site. Um, so where they go. So at, the, at a distance and at their target site. Um, so hormones travel through the bloodstream or they travel through the interstellular fluid. That's all intercellular. It's also sometimes called the interstitial fluid. Um, and that's how it reaches its target. Um, and so hormones, once they reach their target, act on that target to increase or decrease the activity. So we sometimes hear about hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, right? Hypo, low, hyper, high. So hormones are being sent out to that thyroid to regulate its action. If there's not enough hormones, then it's gonna run slow. If there's too many hormones, it'll run fast. There's other factors that cause hypo and hyperthyroidism, but let's stick with hormones for right now. So as we said, here are the uh, different um, parts of the endocrine system. These are all a part of this system. These all produce hormones, different uh, different for different things. So what do these hormones do? These hormones help to reduce anxiety. Uh, so reducing anxiety would be serotonin, right? That's another thing that the body produces. It promotes re relaxation. So in the brain, the endocrine system decreases beta wave activity. So beta waves are when we're actively engaged, our mental, you know, sometimes we, we go to bed and our beta waves, they're still like, bada, 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 bada. it's a really good reason not to have social media in the bedroom, TV in the bedroom. You know, bedrooms are for sleeping and for sex, right? and for relaxing, and maybe that's your sanctuary. And if that's the case, go for it. Um, but just know that when the beta waves are going, it's hard to sleep. So the endocrine, endocrine system, when we start to get ready for bed, uh, decreases that beta wave activity. It'll increase the alpha wave activity. So um, beta is active and aroused, alpha, is quiet, slowing down. So if you're gonna to listen to um, music that increases some activity, you'd want it to increase the alpha wave activity. So if you're doing your binaural beats uh, and you're listening to some cool tunes, but you're getting ready for bed, direct it in that way. Uh, it also increases delta waves. Delta are typically are the sleep waves. Not that you need to know these, but just in case, if you were to get a question like this on the Emblex, celebrate. That's a hard question. If they're talking about beta waves, alpha waves, delta waves. That, that's, that's deep in it. That's kind of out of the scope of practice. But what we do know, which is in the scope of practice, is that this is how massage benefits the endocrine system, benefits. It's how we get to deeper sleep. When we say to clients, hey, maybe you want to consider having a massage at 6 p.m. or 7.30 p.m. Because it could help you to sleep longer. That's because massage increases delta waves. It increases alpha waves, which is what we need for deeper sleep. Uh, it increases dopamine levels, increases serotonin levels. These are all things that help to elicit that parasympathetic nervous system response. 
Uh, massage reduces cortisol levels because it increases our ability to remove waste product. It reduces norepinephrine, reduces epinephrine. So cortisol, norepinephrine, and epinephrine all show up in the fight or flight mode. And massage helps to reduce those levels by helping to increase the amount of metabolic waste that our body is able to re re remove. Studies have shown massage reduces the feelings of depression. Depression is linked to hormones. Massage improves sleep patterns, all of this tied into the endocrine system, right? Ah, good way to segue. All right, we're on the last system of the body for today before we get to our dissecting questions. We're moving into the respiratory system. So what are the components of the respiratory system? Mm -hmm. Let's see a question. Hmm. Uh, what is PCOS? Put that in the chat. Vanessa, I don't know if I'm familiar with that um, particular condition, PCOS. Um, all right, while you're doing that, I'll move into the respiratory system and the anatomy of the respiratory system. We know it's our lungs, right? Breathing, respiration. So to, um, to inhale and exhale, the respiration system. So nose and mouth, right? So through the mouth, we have um, access to the larynx, through the nose, the nostrils, come down the pharynx, go into the larynx. And now you'll see the trachea right here. You do not see the esophagus. Now, sometimes water goes down the trachea and we're like, <coughs> oh, it went down the wrong pipe. Ever heard that? Ever heard that thing? Oh, that water went down the wrong, food went down the wrong pipe. It did go down the wrong pipe. It's supposed to go down the esophagus. It does not go well if it goes down the trachea. Ah, yes. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. Vanessa asked um, if it helps people with polycystic ovary syndrome. It's a hormone disorder. I will say in general, yes. And then I will also say it also depends on the person. So if there is a flare-up, um, massage can help to rebalance those hormones to come out of the flare-up. Um, but also we want to work in coordination with uh, their either general practitioner or their reproductive doctor um, to make sure there's no contraindications for massage with PCOS, with polycystic ovary syndrome. Um, we just need to be careful um, if it's during a flare-up, after a flare-up, what stage they're at, if they're if they're at homeostasis. So working with their medical team, being a part of the team that keeps that stable. So back to the difference between the esophagus and the trachea. The trachea leads to the lungs. The esophagus leads to the... Okay. Thank you, Ensley. Stomach. Yes, exactly. The esophagus leads to the stomach. So that's a part of the digestive system, right? So just be clear because they try and trick you saying, you know, oh, that your esophagus uh, connects to the lungs. Nope. Trachea. Okay. Same pathway, same area, different system. All right. So massage, let's move us down here. So massage reduces the respiration rate. Seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? Reduces respiration. It reduces the rate of respiration. Be super clear on the description. Remember I talked about sympathetic respiration rates? going, you know, I'm leaning into the microphone so you can hear that. So that's short, fast, that's increased respiration. 
increased respiration rate. So massage and the parasympathetic nervous system response is going to reduce the rate. It's gonna slow down the breathing. It's gonna strengthen the respiratory muscles. So part of our respiratory muscles are our intercostal muscles, the muscles in between the ribs that help to open and close to expand the rib cage, to elevate and to contract and shrink, depress the, the, the rib cage. This is the motion of respiration. But actually we breathe not only in and out, right? Like this, up and down, because we think about breathing in, we're breathing in, filling our tank, but we're also breathing out the sides. Give that a try. See if you can put your hands here. Feel your rib cage expand this way. So we, we breathe up, we breathe out, and we breathe front to back. That whole rib cage expands and it strengthens those muscles of respiratory. So massage can strengthen those respiratory muscles by A, reducing the respiration rate, but also by literally getting in there in between the ribs, as long as they're not ticklish, and helping to smooth out that tissue. Increase, you could almost mechanically increase that space between the ribs. It will decrease asthma attacks. Massage can help to decrease asthma attacks by again, improving the amount, the, 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 the quality of respiration. So it's many levels that it improves. And when the bronchial tubes get, when, when the rib cage gets small, when there's short breaths, when those bronchial tubes get narrow, that's when we see shortness of breath and feeling like an asthma attack. So this um, inhaler dilates the bronchioles, dilates, again, big, right? When our pupils are dilated, when we dilate the bronchial tubes, they get bigger and allows more air to flow. So, so massage helps to decrease asthma attacks by helping improve the function of the respiratory system. It increases fluid discharge from the lungs. What fluid is discharging from the lungs? What's discharging from the lungs? <laughs> you have a cold. Say it again, Vanessa. Phlegm, mucus. Phlegm and mucus, right? It increases our body's ability to, <clears throat> to get that out of the lungs because our body is naturally trying to get it out. That's what a sneeze is, by the way is a discharge. So please find your elbow or find a tissue and sneeze, sneeze and cough. It is your body's way to get rid of crap in your body. When our, the cilia in our nose, our nose hairs collect pollen and like these little things, you know, these little flowers, they like, they have these like little, white things, right? They get, they're all over the floor. Um, our nose hairs will catch those. And eventually there's a little alert in the central nervous system that goes out and says, oh, time to sneeze. Achoo! Out it all goes. It's a beautiful thing. Now, some people sneeze a lot. Some people sneeze repetitively when they sneeze. That's all right. You know, everybody's different but allow your body to do what it wants to do, which is get rid of the stuff that doesn't serve us. Um, and so the relaxation response also, according to studies, plays a significant role in how massage improves pulmonary function, pulmonary lung, pulmonary function. Pulmonary function returns to, refers to the lungs. Um, it loosens those respiratory muscles and allows for better functioning. All right. So this is how massage improves the respiratory system. So which part of our nervous system 
is responsible for the relaxation response. Parasympathetic. Thank you. Did you all hear that? Parasympathetic. Take a look. All right, the sympathetic nervous system is ah, cheetah, the gazelle running away. Cheetah, ah, saber tooth tiger, ah, fight or flight. Parasympathetic nervous system, calm, meditation, chill out. All right. Are you ready to dissect some questions? Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Did a lot of learning. I'm warning you. These questions are a little tricky. I've designed them to simulate questions I've either gotten myself or heard about on the MBLEX. A lot of my colleagues are test question writers. In fact, take a look at what I've done. I'm adding to your questions in the practice exam. And so these are some tough, this is by Laura Allen. And she mean, she mean when it comes to her questions. So um, here we go. You ready? What you thinking, Cap on? Which one of these effects is not a benefit of massage? A, maintains posture and balance. B, increases the flow of nutrients to bones. C, decreases elimination of weight, waste matter. D, increases flexibility and strength of joints. So in dissecting the questions, I like you to eliminate one answer that you think is wrong. But before we can do that, we must fully understand what the question is asking. Did you notice the tricky word in this question. What would be the tricky word in this question? Oh, yes. Yes, Vanessa caught it. She just shared it with everybody. Yep, Char got it too. Uh-huh. All right. So which one of these effects is not a benefit of massage. Let's get rid of one of them that we know, you know, is a benefit of massage. So by eliminating a wrong answer, we're gonna eliminate a benefit. So pretty sure massage increases the flow of nutrients to bones. So, and uh, let's see, it was Char who said, get rid, you can take out letter D too. So increases flexibility and strength of joints. That is true. And, oh, Vanessa's saying A is a benefit as well. Now here I've highlighted the word not. So please make your final selection. Which one of these effects is not a benefit of massage? And the correct answer is letter C. Oh, we have some chat. Yes, 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 Lauren, yes, Char, yes. The correct answer is letter C, like cat. Which one of these is not a benefit of massage? Decreases elimination of waste matter. It increases elimination of waste matter. Which one of these is a benefit of massage? A, either sedates or stimulates the nervous system depending on the pacing and techniques used. B, by balancing the nervous system, massage affects all systems. C, can free nerves impinged by muscle or connective tissue? D, all of the above. Which one of these is a benefit of massage? Funky question. We are not going to eliminate a wrong answer here. I'd like you to pick which one of these is a benefit of massage. I see the answers rolling in. Vanessa, Milka, 
Ensley. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Yep. Okay. And the correct answer is D. All of the above. Here's what's tricky about this question. Every answer is right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you picked A, you're right. You pick B, you're right. C, you're right. But D, D like dog, is the best answer. All of the above. Name the benefits of the SNS response. Name the benefits of the sympathetic nervous system response. So here's an example of an abbreviation, SNS. Would you have identified that as the sympathetic nervous system? I put it in the question just in case. What is a benefit of the sympathetic nervous system response? Reduces blood flow to non-essential organs, digestive, urinary, increases to heart and lungs. B, increases blood flow to the digestive system. C, decreases heart rate and blood pressure. D, respiration deepens and slows down. Okay, let's take a look, guys and gals. Name a benefit of the sympathetic nervous system. Hmm. So a benefit, this is, can you see why this is a tricky question? It's a benefit of the sympathetic nervous system. Are there benefits of the sympathetic nervous system? Hell yeah, you about to get eaten by a bear. You better hope your nervous system, sympathetic nervous system kicks in. Right, now you're getting it. Yeah, exactly. And I don't remember if I gave you an elimination of one wrong answer. Let's take a peek. Ready? Okay. So the sympathetic nervous system we know does not decrease the heart rate, right? Sympathetic. Ah, bear. Right? Okay. So A, B, or D. Name the benefit of the sympathetic nervous system response. You, you already have it. Oh, Char, come on. Let's go. You pick one. You can't pick two and on the inflex. Ready? Final answer. Boom. A. A, because the sympathetic nervous system reduces the blood flow to non-essential organs, like your digestive system and urinary system, and it increases it to the heart and lungs. It does not increase the blood flow to the digestion. We ain't, we're not resting and digesting. It does not decrease the heart rate. And I cannot, and it does not slow down respiration, right? Best answer. See how that can be tricky? A benefit of the sympathetic nervous system? We don't always think in terms of that, but there is a benefit if you're about to run away from a bear. All right, which of these is not a benefit of massage to the endocrine system? Which of these is not a benefit of massage to the endocrine system? You just learned all about the endocrine system. I didn't even talk about the lymphatic system so it wouldn't be confusing. Okay, A, which of these is not a benefit? of massage to the endocrine system. A, influence levels of multiple hormones. B, improves production and absorption of insulin. C, produces change in hormones related to pregnancy, labor, and postpartum depression. D, improves range of motion and flexibility. Do you see what's tricky about this question? You guys all got it, Milka, Ensley, Paige. You were not tricked. Okay, which of these is not a benefit 
of massage to the endocrine system. Well, we know that both A and C are benefits to the endocrine system. So you just have to choose between B and D and you guys got it. Improves range of motion and flexibility. And someone out there in cyberspace or in the classroom is saying, what the hell? Massage, a benefit of massage is improved range of motion, improves range of motion, and it improves their flexibility. That's totally a benefit of massage. Yes, Lauren, you're right. Letter D is a benefit of massage, just not to the endocrine system. Okay. And I think we have one more. Oh, that's a wrap. Yay. All right. So that's a wrap for today. Uh, that was the last question. Good work. Those questions are crazy, right? That's why we dissect the questions. That's why. That's why we dissect questions. Because they can be tricky. So, yeah. And so that is why also, and then let me just reiterate what I mentioned at the beginning of our class today. Just slow down a little. Whether you're doing 10 questions on MBLEX prep or you're doing a full 100 question practice exam to simulate the MBLEX, just slow down just a little bit. We're all kind of anxious. Oh, am I going to find the right answer? Oh, am I going to know the right answer? Oh my God, multifili. What the, you know, there are words that are going to come at you that are going to create a nervous system response, a little bit of flight or flight. Yes. And Lauren says, yeah, right. Slow down. Keywords. Yes. Um, so I'm going to stay on. Uh, oh, we had one question I wanted to address that was right back at the beginning. Hold on just a moment. And that was, um, when taking the test, what would you read first, the answers or the questions? Definitely the question. You got to know what ballpark you're playing in. So I think of like all the different baseball parks in America, all the different sports stadiums in the world. We got to know what ballpark we're in before we can even begin to look at those answers. So my recommendation, read the question, understand the question, maybe even rephrase the question. You know, you heard me today saying, which of these is not a benefit of massage? So blank is not a benefit of massage. You can, you can just re, rework that in your mind, rework that even out loud. Yes. All right, let me see if there's any questions. Yes, so good stuff. Yeah, thank you, Paige. Um, slow down and look for keywords. Yes, Lawrence, slow down and look for keywords. Absolutely. Um, so I will wrap up our recording now uh, by saying thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time to be here. You have now gone through uh, a lovely review of the benefits and physiological effects of massage on the nervous system, the endocrine system, and the respiratory system. Uh, my name is Jody Skoll, and I am your instructor for this class. Uh, if you didn't see it in the description uh, on the YouTube channel, uh, you can join us in the patron community uh, where you have full access to all of our videos. Um, on YouTube, we only, I only post half of those videos. And starting in about six weeks, we're only gonna be posting about 15 minutes of class. So fair warning, things are shifting as of September. Um, but if you're digging it and this is working for you, come find us in the patron community. The, uh, it's in the description right here below. Thanks so much for being here again. My name is Jody Scholes and we'll see you again real soon.